Is it just me? Or is it getting crazier out there? It is certainly dense. So I know this video is gonna get demonetized, so I might as well just... Ah! <sighs> Fuck government! In times of world-ending, collective IQ deteriorating, global pandemic, nothing is more important than good hand-washing hygiene. Gene. You wanna show that coronavirus who's the boss? And that's why I'm here. I'm going to show you how to properly wash your hands. We're gonna get the hand wash. Uh, that's uh, the best one on the market. You wanna make sure it has some alcohol content, content, content in there to be sure that it kills the virus. You wanna make sure, you wanna make sure it's in the course of the alcohol on your hands. Right hand, you wanna make sure that it's in the surface. You wanna wash your hands like that. You wanna make sure that it's in the surface. You wanna make sure that all the virus is going down the drain. Going down the drain. You shut the virus to the boss. There we go. That's the virus done. And that's how you wash your hands. Now that we've got that obligatory, 100% accurate, official handwashing lecture out of the way, it's time to get to the serious business. You want to make sure you have plenty of guns and at least a thousand rounds of ammo in case someone tries to break into your home and steal your gold and silver. That's right, you need some precious metals too. You think that cash you keep has any value? Or that your little credit card is gonna work in a global pandemic? Because in times of food shortages and when people are starving, they're sure gonna want to trade whatever little amount they have got left for something that has no practical use or nutrition value. That's the post-collapse economics 101 for you. There is no shortage of bad advice on the internet telling you to mindlessly spend cash on precious metals, duct tape, flashlight, and N95 masks. Nothing personal against preppers, it's just that thinking they can shut their doors for 6 months because they bought 100 kilograms of rice is cute but delusional. So I want to make this video where I give you a rational toolkit that's been known to work as a security strategy and it perfectly applies to pandemic preparedness as well. When preparing for a viral outbreak, you can waste a lot of money on N95 masks and coveralls, but you may never get to use them because you might not be allowed to leave your home, or the virus could spread through ventilation systems into your home where, where you are not wearing a mask 24-7, as was suspected to be the case on Diamond Princess cruise ship. You may take all these steps without even thinking about creating financial reserves to cover the bills when income is not coming in. For most people, their biggest issue with the pandemic is how they're gonna pay their bills for gas, electricity, rent, food and essentials when their city is under a lockdown or their workplace has been closed due to a market disruption. Following any advice without a basic security strategy may lead you to unnecessary expenditure at best and false sense of security at worst. In this video, I will walk you through a basic three-step security plan. These three steps are threat analysis, risk assessment, and mitigation plan. It's the most foundational way of professional security evaluation that I think anybody can easily understand and follow. Threat analysis is about identifying what threats lay ahead, irrespective of how likely you are to face them. Risk assessment is where you take a look at your threat list and evaluate how likely, how likely you are to suffer adverse consequences from them. In mitigation planning, you're trying to find the best ways to protect yourself from or prevent adverse effects of the most likely risks. Threat analysis. First and foremost, we need to identify how serious a threat SARS-CoV-2 really is, as many people are still downplaying it when compared to seasonal flu. Well, the contagiousness of this coronavirus is based on its r naught, which averages at around 3.3, more than twice as contagious as seasonal flu with an r naught of 1.3. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, COVID-19 has 20 times the mortality rate of seasonal flu, sitting at roughly 2% versus 0.095% of the seasonal flu. According to official numbers, 22% of the cases of COVID-19 disease need hospitalization, whereas only 0.018% of common influenza cases end on hospital beds. 
SARS-CoV-2 is a novel virus, which means humans have not developed an immune response to it, unlike to a common cold or flu. This novel coronavirus has put 780 million people in China under travel restrictions and 150 million have been restricted from leaving their homes. This is unprecedented and such measures have never been taken with a seasonal flu. On top of that, national healthcare systems weren't built for accepting thousands of people into hospitals. If the outbreak spins out of control, adequate help may not be available to a lot of critical cases of the novel coronavirus and COVID-19 death rate may substantially increase. Here is a list of threats that coronavirus poses. Getting infected, losing job or income, facing a lockdown or quarantine, shortage of medical and food supplies. Now this list is not exhaustive, so if you feel like there is more threats to it, feel free to post them in the comments down below. Risk assessment. So let's see which of these threats are most likely and severe risks. This is going to be individual based on where you live, what you do for a living, what's your age and gender, and a bunch of other external factors. If you don't live in a major city, or your country doesn't have many cases, if at all, the chances of getting infected are rather low for now. You're far more likely to be affected by economic impacts of coronavirus outbreaks in your country or even abroad. The most likely scenario is that you will be let go from your job or that you will have to work from home if your employer allows that. This will hugely impact your income and your ability to cover living costs during an outbreak. If you have family or people to take care of, thinking about maintaining care is far more urgent than preventing an unlikely infection. Coronavirus has already been disrupting global supply chain. This may lead to plenty of shortages in food, electronics, and especially medical supplies. If you live in areas with lots of international travel, and especially if you live in a crowded apartment building, your infection risk increases. If you have enough financial reserves or can work from home, then infection is potentially of a higher risk than economic adversity. Lockdowns and quarantines are popular measures for schools, hotels, offices or entire towns with a recent spike in cases. As has been the case with Italy, lockdowns can happen unexpectedly and without prior warnings. If your government is transparent in testing and reporting cases, they are more likely to take these measures than governments that try to conceal as much information as possible to prevent panic. And lastly, shortages of medical supplies is only a concern if you need prescription drugs that you can't get anywhere without doctor's approval. You may be tempted to stockpile on painkillers, cough medication or fever reducing pills. But reducing your fever may be counterproductive in combating a virus in your body and a lot of over-the-counter help-yourself medication has questionable efficiency. Unless you know what you're buying and why, the only shortage you should be worried about is food and potentially even water. Mitigation plan. Okay, so let's see how we can mitigate the most important risks. Have some financial reserves. If your number one concern is income, you may need to start saving extra money to be able to afford food and to pay for bills when your earnings are down. As a general rule, you should have at least several months of your monthly expenditure in your reserves. Many people are living paycheck to paycheck. Figure out where you can save money by cutting down on expenditure that you can live without right now. Try to get rid of any outstanding debt you might have. Definitely don't go overdraft on your cards because banks will never forget your debt and they will want it paid back when it's the least convenient for you. Be sure to have some means of digital payment because cash may not be accepted due to fears of transmission. If you are opening a new bank account for this, try to get one that's with the lowest monthly fees or even entirely free. Delay infection for as long as possible. Depending on your location, preventing an infection may be equally important as sustaining economic downturn. Learn the habit of rigorous hand washing, avoid touching places in public, don't use public toilets and stop touching your face. Virus on your hands can be transmitted orally or even through your eyes. Use a paper towel or your elbows to open doors in public buildings. Get an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with 70% alcohol content. Alcohol sanitizers are recommended by CDC as effective killers of viruses as well as bacteria.
don't use sanitizers with too much alcohol content because high percentage alcohol evaporates too quickly to stay on the virus for long enough to kill it. You should also disinfect surfaces you touch frequently. That is your phone, laptop, doorknobs, tabletops and kitchen counters, frequent household items. Remember, you don't have to buy any special equipment for disinfecting yourself or your items. Any 70% alcohol liquid will kill the virus if exposed to it for a couple of minutes. If you have air conditioning in your flat and you're living in a highly contaminated quarantine zone, it might be a good idea to seal your ventilation systems with a duct tape for the duration of the outbreak. If you're expected to go out in a quarantine zone where you might be exposed to a contaminated air, only then does it make sense to own antiviral respirators. Be aware respirators are not dust masks and they are significantly more expensive, especially right now. The only respirators that will give you any meaningful protection from a virus are N95 or N99 masks in North America and FFP3 or FFP2 masks in Europe. I found a study that says protection levels are not statistically different enough between FFP2 masks and FFP3 masks. On paper, N99s and FFP3s should block smaller particles, while N95s and FFP2s focus on larger droplets. But American CDC or French Health Department are using N95s and FFP2s for their medical staff, so if it's enough for them, it should be enough for you. Be aware of scams and resellers trying to price gouge people in need. There are plenty of listings that don't meet official certification. All European masks need to comply with EN 149-2001 certification, and CDC has published a full list of approved N95 respirators that I will post a link to in the description. Make sure you undergo a fit test for each mask. A respirator should form a tight seal around your mouth and nose so that no air can pass through. If you have respiratory problems, you may not be able to wear a filtration mask. Remember that these respirators are not reusable and should be disposed of when exposed to contamination. Viral particles may stay on the mask for days and you need to be able to safely take the mask off your face, bin it so that it can't spread the virus and wash your hands with an alcohol sanitizer or antibacterial soap. Because these masks are so expensive right now, your best strategy might be to avoid going into contaminated areas in the first place. And lastly, wearing these masks for a prolonged period of time may trigger skin irritation or even allergic reaction. You may want to have some anti-allergic skin cream if this becomes your case. On top of a mask, you may need to wear some eye protection, either tightly sealed goggles such as swimming goggles or any safety goggles or at least sunglasses may be better than nothing. If you intend to reuse these, make sure you safely disinfect them with 70% alcohol without contaminating yourself during the procedure. Prepare for a lockdown scenario and related supply shortages. Facing a lockdown situation may accelerate related risks, such as shortages of medicine, food and water. In a quickly emerging outbreak, your area might be put under a lockdown, quarantine or some kind of martial law. You may be prohibited from exiting your home for several days, if not weeks at a time. In this scenario, government should be delivering supplies of food and hopefully other essentials as well straight to your door. But just to be sure, you should keep a stockpile of food that won't perish and you actually like to eat it. Rice, pasta, oats, canned beans, vegetables and meat, honey, peanut butter, salt and pepper, whatever has a long shelf life and you'd actually eat it, buy enough supplies of it in advance. Equally crucial is to get hygiene products, including toilet paper, paper towels, soap, shampoo, feminine hygiene, disinfectants and sanitizers. You may be forced to stay indoors for a long time and you should be thinking about ways to kill as much of it as possible. Video games, books, music, board games, card games, learning a new language, learning Asian cuisine, stockpile on some yeast and flour and learn how to make homemade bread. Whatever takes enough time and it's entertaining enough for you to take your mind off of the anxious situation will be priceless.
Even if you are not a huge book reader, you may have so much spare time on your hands that you might crave doing things you would never done before. Stacking water, water purification tablets or pool shock or water filters may become necessary down the line if water pipelines become disrupted due to the pandemic. How likely this is, I am not aware enough to tell. My gut feeling says it's probably very unlikely given what we know about the virus, but things could always spin in all different directions. If you regularly need prescription drugs, you may need to speak to your doctor about their availability and what your options are in terms of stockpiling during an outbreak in your area. It's best to try to avoid needing a hospital treatment, so have a proper first aid kit that enables you to treat minor injuries and health issues without professional assistance. If you have any additional ideas or tips on how to prepare for a viral outbreak without surrendering your brain cells to Satan, please post them in the comments below. Thank you for your engagement, likes and shares, and thank you for watching. If you like this content, please support the channel on Patreon or through my Monero or Bitcoin wallets. Thank you for your support.